Just an hour south of London, you find yourself in the wilderness. Not long ago, this was a traditional farm, but the owners decided to shut their eyes and see what would happen if they allowed nature to take it all back. The results astounded even them, the rate at which it all grew back. Now it not only absorbs huge amounts of carbon dioxide, but it's teeming with wildlife. Species have come back here, like the stork in that tree off in the distance, that haven't been seen in the UK for hundreds of years. Before that, it had been really, you know, wheat as far as the eye could see. It was, it was the typical monoculture of, of British farming. And we used to travel the world to look at wildlife, and we never once thought that we could get it back on our doorstep. And this was where it could be really as rich as anywhere. We're not going to expect uh, large swaths of England to turn into rewilded landscapes. But I think that this could be used within a mix of other other, um, uh, I don't know, other solutions for giving space to nature. But is it farming? No crops, but animals roaming free. Income from meat sales topped up by camping and large, enthusiastic European subsidies. It is absolutely impossible to imagine that this used to be a wheat field only 15 years ago, but it just shows you what happens when you let nature take its course. And it does speak very much to the entire philosophy of this place, which is that Farming obviously has very much been part of the problem as far as climate change is concerned, but it can be part of the solution as well. These hedgerows have been here for, you know, centuries. Nearby, though, there's some scepticism about this new model. And like his neighbours, David doesn't own all his land and has to make a profit to pay the rent. So he says he still has an eye on the environment, letting land go fallow, letting the trees grow for the kingfishers to nest in. But next to all this are the crops he grows for sale, the modern side of farming blamed for so many environmental problems. We have all the biodiversity, all the species, so the turtle doves and the nightingales here that you might find on, uh, on a rewilding site as well. But we produce loads of food, food as well. And rather than all the money being poured into a very small area of the, far, of the farmland, uh, of the land of the country, it'd be far better to use it to create that mix of sort of biodiversity and food and farming alongside it. The problem is that some environmentalists say the earth may only have 60 harvests left. That's 60 years before the soil is damaged beyond repair. Consequently, the NEP estate maintains a flood of visitors from Europe and beyond, looking at what they've done as the sense of climate crisis grows and people look for radical solutions. But British politics are changing even faster and what happens to this place as a model, a grand experiment, is not at all clear. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, in Sussex.